you haven't done so already yet, please pause the video and try the question on your own before moving on. In part A of the question, we are being asked to determine the height of the water column, which would be measured from the top of the water down to the interface where the water and mercury meet. If we look carefully, we can see that the water is encapsulated in essentially what is a cylinder, and we know that the volume of a cylinder is simply equal to the area of the base, which would be a circle, multiplied by the height of the cylinder, which we've marked as h. Now solving this equation for h by dividing both sides by a leaves us with volume divided by area is equal to the height of the water column. We were given the area in the question. If we look back, we can see that a2 was given as 5 centimeters squared, and that a2 would indeed represent the area of either the top of the cylinder or of the bottom. It would be the same. So A2 is known. What is not known is the volume, and so our challenge is to find that. But that should be relatively easy, because we know that density is equal to mass divided by volume. And if we solve this equation for the volume, we could see that volume is equal to mass divided by density. Well, the mass of the water was given to us. It was stated as being 100 grams. So we can plug that in for the mass. And then the density of water is a constant. It is known to be 1 gram per centimeter cubed. So actually calculating the volume of water present in this column is relatively easy. We would be left with 100 centimeters cubed. So now that we have the volume and also the area of this cylindrical region of water, we can plug into our formula and solve for height. And of course 100 centimeters cubed divided by 5 centimeters squared would amount to 20 centimeters. Notice that the centimeters cubed and the centimeters squared will cancel out to just form centimeters. And indeed, that is the correct answer for part A. Now, for part B of the question, what we want to notice is that this region of space is initially empty. It doesn't contain any mercury. But then, once the water is added, the mercury sort of fills up that space. Now, we know from the earlier discussion that the volume of this liquid right here, which is a cylinder shape, can be calculated by the area which again is that circular cross-sectional area right there, times the height. Now in this particular case over here, the area would be the area marked as A1. So we can actually put a subscript of 1 onto the area, and the H would represent the height right here. This mercury that is occupying the space had to come from somewhere, and of course it came from this now empty region. In essence, the mercury that used to occupy this region right here has now been displaced and occupies the region over here. The volumes of these two regions would indeed be the same. So we need an expression for the volume of this region right here. And to accomplish that, we're going to go ahead and mark this height as just h2 for now. Now, the volume again would be equal to the area of the cylindrical region right here, which was a2, multiplied by that height that we just marked, so that would be h2. And again, since the volume of this empty region is equal to the volume of where this mercury is now present, we can set these two volumes equal to one another. Now for now, what we'll do is solve this equation for h2. So to do that, of course, we can divide both sides by a2. We can fill in the known values of a1 and a2. a1 was given as 10 centimeters squared, and recall that a2 was 5 centimeters squared. And this equation can simplify by canceling the centimeters squared and dividing 10 by 5. And we can see that the height h2 that we had marked previously is equal to exactly 2 times the height of the water column. Now, that may not seem like a very helpful result yet, but what we'll do is hang on to it and refer back to it in just a moment. Now, to move forward with this question, what we need to note is that the pressure at this point right here at the water-mercury interface would be equal to the pressure on the other arm of the U-tube of this section of the mercury-filled portion. And that stems from the principle that all points at the same elevation within a fluid will have equal pressure. Now the pressure at this point right here can be represented by the following expression. We have the external pressure from the atmosphere that's bearing down on top of the water column added to the pressure exerted by the water column itself, which is the density of the water column times g times the height of the water column. Now, the pressure at this point in the fluid 
can be represented with a similar expression. We have the pressure exerted by the atmosphere over on this side right here, plus the pressure exerted by the weight of the mercury column itself, which can be represented as the density of the mercury times g times this height right here. Now note that we need the height from the top of the mercury column all the way down to the point that we are studying. That height would simply be the height h that was previously marked on the figure added to the height h2 that we had introduced earlier. If you don't recall what that h2 was, you can rewind the video a couple of minutes and take a look at it. Now as noted, these two pressures are equal to one another, so we're going to set them equal to each other. Now because the term P0 appears on both sides, we can subtract it from both sides, which essentially cancels it. In fact, G appears on both sides of the equation, so if we divide both sides by G, we can cancel that term as well. At this point, you can either plug in the known values and then solve for H, or vice versa, you can sort of solve for H and then plug in the known values. I suppose in this case we can go ahead and divide both sides by the density of mercury. We would then have H plus H2 isolated. At that point the parentheses could drop. And then notice we have H2 here, which is an unknown, but we had solved earlier for H2. We said that H2 was equal to 2H, so we're just going to go ahead and plug 2H right there for H sub 2. We could then combine these into 3H. And finally divide both sides by 3. When we divide this side by 3, basically the 3 just gets plopped there in the denominator. And now that we've isolated h, we can fill in all the known values. Notice that for h sub w, that was the height of the water column that we had found previously in part a, and that was 20 centimeters. So now we can just pick up our calculators and calculate this quantity. The grams per centimeter cubed will cancel, and that's just going to leave us with centimeters. And 0 0.490 centimeters to be precise. So that will represent the height that the mercury column rises in the left arm, that very small distance h that was marked in the figure. So thanks very much for taking the time to view this video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to reply. Also note that you are welcome to send your own question to the email address listed on your screen.